All right, I'm going to call the Public Utilities Commission meeting uh, dated August 10th, 2023 to order. When we start by reciting a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Um, do we have anyone on Zoom? I think that's Marty. Yeah, I'm on by phone. Okay. So we have no public comment. Do we have any correspondence? So no correspondence. Minutes. Um, meeting minutes from the regular meeting of July 13th, 2023. Can I have a motion on the minutes? No, you do Second. Second. Okay. Okay, any discussion? Has everyone gone through the minutes? Okay, hearing none, uh, all in favor accepting the minutes? Aye. Any opposed? Then I will abstain. I was absent. All right. So next on the list, financials, Brad. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about one month into the year. We're in a deficit position because we haven't built anything yet because the buildings are quarterly. Um, I ran through quickly where we were spending the money and knock on wood, nothing's kind of popped out at us yet. Um, so yeah, overall, it's financials in July are usually pretty boring, but that's good. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I'll answer, but there's really not a lot there. And you're still figuring out how we ended last budget? Yeah. So at some point, I'll give you a final June. Okay. Um, usually we run all of your bills through early September. Okay. Um, I didn't get a chance to look at what's on the invoices for today, but my guess is there's probably one that's probably still dated June 30th. Um, so until we get all those in. At that point, I'll run an old year on him for you. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Brad? All right. Hearing none, we will go to the invoices. Do um, you want to forward the invoices with us? Is there anything you want to talk about? I see we have Weston and Samson, Wright Pierce. Yeah, I don't know if you want to start with your motion and then oh. discussion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This, let, let's start by approving uh, Brad's report. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Can I have a motion? Motion to uh, uh, accept the controller's report. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, invoices. Uh, and I have a motion to discuss the invoices. I'll make a motion that we pay invoices in the amount of $906,771.01. So, for discussion. 900, the paperwork I got says 310. Oh, it's a spreadsheet. It's a new one. Uh, a new spreadsheet to be. No, that's the old, that's from the minutes. Oh, that's you want to so, yeah, yeah, that's that's further, 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 further down. Wait, that's yeah. going to get, yeah. All right. All right, so now we could discuss them. Uh, so anything you want to talk about? The, the two big ones, uh, the Kovax construction, that's the Bergstrom well, and then the Green Mountain pipeline is the pipelining along the uh, railroad um, uh, easement. And uh, we got a Wright Pierce for the SCADA project, a uh, Wright Pierce for the construction admin on Bergstrom, and the Weston and Sampson uh, construction admin on the railroad easement. Okay. Pretty, pretty uh, standard. Does anyone have any questions before we vote on them? Uh, thank you. I see we've got the spreadsheet on the administration for the Bergstrom. Yes. So. Yeah, that, that's the White Pierce uh, contract for 1.1, and then I had them break them down by tasks. 
So Marius is doing a pretty good job of keeping that, you know, updated there with the various tasks that they're doing for construction admin. Okay. Any other questions or comment, guys? All right. Carrying on, I'll try uh, your mind. All those in support of Richie's motion of approving $906,771.01 for the invoices. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do we have any new business that we need to discuss? Nothing on the agenda. No. Okay, no new business. We will go to the director's report. Okay. Uh, just an update. Well, I have no no new information, Rich, on the Briarcliff tank. I'll try, uh, to, I'll try to get some more done before the next meeting. Um, PFAS, we got, I got our results back this week, uh, on the samples we just took, we're going to, again, try to do them, uh, quarterly to just kind of start building up a history and the results were pretty typical from what we've seen previously. Uh, we had six PFAS chemicals that we've got to detect on. They're all in the single digits. They range from a, a 1.3 to a 4.4. Um, and a bunch of others that were non-detected. So 1.3 to what? 4.4, you said? Yeah, 4.4 was the highest. 1.38 was the lowest of any of the detects that we got. This is parts per trillion. <laughs> now, the, the two chemicals that they're proposing MCLs for, PFOA and PFAS, and, and they're proposed is 4.0. Uh, we, we're still getting a hit on, on PFOA for uh, Maple Well 1A. So obviously we're going to continue to monitor and see where it goes. It may lead us to needing treatment unless there's some changes to the, you know, what they're going to propose. Have, have we tested the other wells? It's only in the one well or no, no, I'm testing well 1A, well 2A, and the combined uh, uh, point of entry into the system. So well 2A has been better. Don't, don't ask me why, but well, that's what it's. What was the number on well one A? Um. Okay, so well one A had a four point four on the P four on the P four, and <clears throat> just so you know, two A was uh, two point five six, so it was less than four. But we're still in the single digit, so I'm not really sure. You know, if we're consistently below four, does that mean okay, no treatment, or if you're that close? You know, do you put in treatment as a just in case you have it, in case your numbers change? So I think we're just going to have to go forward, keep, keep building up the history, and see how the rule develops. How do you treat that? Um, a couple of treatments: uh, um, GAC, granulated activated carbon, uh, ion exchange. Um, uh, there might be one other that I'm not thinking of, but I think those are the two main. It looks like uh, GAC might be the the more you know uh, readily available way to go. Mm -hmm. um, with the ion exchange, you've got now a waste stream that you got to deal with. With the carbon, I think you basically get the carbon shipped back to say Calgon. They seem to be the big carbon supplier. Mm -hmm. They burn it off. They give you your carbon back. Now, what happens with what they're burning? I think that's that's their problem. But um, I'm sure there'll be regulations with respect to that too. So, well, I'm sure the state will let you know what they want you to do. Once yeah. Now, finalize. Them. My understanding too, it's a it, it's a four quarter running average. So, if you get a hit in one quarter, but you're you're below in in other quarters, your four quarter running average may not be above four. So you may be okay. But if we keep getting a sample that's greater than four, then your four quarter running average is always going to be greater than four. So is it something where if you were close and even though the state said you didn't have to do it, is it something you might recommend that I think we need to lower the levels? You know, it, it, it depends. It's, it's, you know, it's one of these that are, you, you know, we'll, as, as more gets publicized about it, I think the public gets more, you know, anxious about it and, um, What's the damage to human consumption? What could it cause? Various various chemicals hit you in different ways. Could be thyroid, could be, you know, liver, could be, you know. But again, these health studies they do are basically saying if you're going to 
<laughs> consume this water. And uh, of course, some people do consume it for their life if they're in the system. So we can't just rule that out. But yeah. but that's usually, it's not like you're going to take a sip of it and all of a sudden get sick. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so it's, it's, it's impacting a lot of systems. It's going to impact many, many systems across the country. But it was say better state levels. Oh, this is EPA. This would be federal, which again, all of that Safe Drinking Water Act rules are EPA, but administered through the state. And of course, on all of these Safe Drinking Water Act rules, the state can make it, they can go tougher on you if they want. So I think it's too early to tell still at this point. And if they make it do it, it's a big cost. For that it's a big cost. It's a big cost. It's a big cost. That's a big tank. And what's going to happen too is as the rule hits, and everyone has to have it at the same time. Now demand went up for these steel tanks and for the carbon, and the price is going to go up. Oh, so, you know, some some comments to the rule were, "Hey, maybe stagger it." And if and if your results are at this level, you have to comply within X amount of time. If your levels are here, then you stagger it. You have to come into compliance later. And if you're just a little bit over, you know, so you stagger your compliance. Yeah, right. Again, the rule is still open for debate. So, so how many months are we away from having a long enough average? Uh, well, it, it, it's um, the way the rule is proposed. They're saying um, in three years you have to come into compliance. What am I talking about? Till you have your baseline. Huh? Well, uh, so we, yeah. we, we've we've collected now. I collected samples in 2021, and now my recent samples, which I'd like to do quarterly, we've gotten two quarterly samples. So if I get two more, then at least there's a year's worth plus that previous, you know, but they seem to be like they're going to be in those ranges. We're going to be in the single digits, most likely. So now it's a matter of are they keeping the rule at four? And if we're right at four, how do you say no treatment? Or how does the state say, no, you don't have to treat? If you're exceeding, you're going to have to treat. Yep. If you're close, I think you got to really consider treatment because what if your next sample puts you over? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I think we get a drawdown. Sorry, how much more are you drawing through to create it? Um, well, we're just we're not changing our flow rate, we're just grabbing a sample. I don't no, know that it changes with the flow rate, yeah. yeah. Low time, high time, stuff like that. Well, that's why I want to do it quarterly, that's seasonally, what what's yeah. happening, right. you know. Okay. Yeah. But supposedly, these chemicals they're in the environment and they, they last forever, so oh, yeah. Unless there's more industry putting into the environment, which I don't know that there really is around here. I think they are what they are. And yep. so by by the beginning of next year, we'll have an idea yeah. and we can make an informed decision. Yeah. And in say another six months, yeah. I'll have another, I'll have a sample in three months. I'll have another sample in six months. I mean, if we're that close, like you yeah, said, it might just make sense just to do it before the price is skyrocketing. Well, you, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. I, yeah. I, I would, I would want to, I want the rule to be finalized, of course, before so you know what you're up against. Yeah. A lot of these rules, they propose them. They say what the deadline's going to be, and then they don't quite finalize it for another length of time. So, okay. any, you, any, oh, go ahead, Richard. Do you stagger the wells? I mean, like one A, one. Uh, well, they're, they're they're typically running together. Yeah. Right, but uh, do when we, we sample the old, the old wells, are we using the old wells at all? Not, not. I, I'm. They're kind of on reserve for when we got to take the main wells out of service, just because okay. we're, you know, we're. The drawdowns and the output from the new wells are just better than the old wells. Okay, all right. I was so, just curious. What I'd like to see us do maybe a little bit more now is is in the winter time maybe rest those new wells a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, Ed did he he didn't really like switching back and forth much, so I didn't really press him too much on that. Um, we we flipped over to the old whenever we had to redevelop. You know the new, and just uh, curiosity uh, maybe. Uh, your other report. When's uh burps break store supposed to come online? Well, the construction 25. this is the 25. Basically, I think January of 25 is substantial completion. Okay. So we should be putting water through that plant prior to that. Yeah. Like maybe in the fall of 24, cl close to that time frame. Again, with supply chain and getting equipment and getting, I mean. Uh, I won't be surprised if if that end line is delayed a little bit, you know. So if we can meet that deadline, terrific. But you know, we'll know better as we get closer. And just one more question: sure. When you say you test uh, the the samples at each wells, and do you test it where they combine together? Yes. Yeah. And that, and that 
and, and they're in that all they're all in that same close number right. exactly they're all in that same ball. All right. thank you okay. right. anything else for us uh yeah a few things miu's uh we we replaced uh, a total of 110 since the last meeting so we, we had a couple of guys come in and, and do some saturday work which we wanted to just see how many are you getting done they actually were pretty uh productive on saturday so okay. I think since we put more money into the budget for those items, we're going to keep trying to maybe push that a little bit and, um, you, you know, we'll see how we go. So I'll keep updating on a monthly basis how many we're getting. Um, we've got a, a, a new uh, maintainer starting Monday. Um, lead and copper rule. <clears throat> I'm going to send out, a, a, I want to send out a flyer to customers. I mean, probably at least a third of our customers we know the services have been installed somewhat recently. They're all copper services. Some of the ones we're not real clear about what kind of material we have. The lead and copper rule kind of suggests sending something out to customers, let them self-verify. You can, and I, so I put, a, I put together a uh, postcard. It hasn't gone out yet, but basically it's, hey, Mr. You know, homeowner, can you identify the pipe for us and, and let us know? It's to, it's to get, I'm not using those words. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, that's going to go. Like, oh, yeah, that's that's gonna go yeah. I'm just being yeah. generic right and now. Basically, by the way, you have to replace it. Looks good to me. No, no, no. It's like, but it's, hey, let's get the lead out. You have, the lead, you have a lead service pipe. Let's find out. So they can do a scratch test. They can do put a magnet on it. A couple of simple tests will tell you if it's lead or not lead. I'm not anticipating a lot of lead services. But I got to document things. So if I can get customers, even if 25% of those people email us back with some information, it's good to have. Now, is it their responsibility to replace those or else? Well, no. we have to replace our portion. Right. And they'd have to replace the portion. I, I'm not 100% clear on, on the requirement yet on the customer side. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, right. That remains to be seen. But like I said, I, I don't know that we're going to have a lot of lead to deal with. Hopefully not. But you got lead sweeps, you got galvanized, you got unknown. If I if we identify our services as unknown, that's not the greatest thing either, because the proof in the pudding will be when we go and collect our lead samples. If we start to tweak above the lower limit they're going to set, now you've got to come up with a plan to replace your lead services or your unknowns. They're going to treat unknowns as if then you got to replace them. So it's kind of complicated, okay. but I just want to let you know, I'm going to send something out. You may hear from people. You may receive one if you're in the area. I don't know that any of you guys are, but um, asking people to self-identify. And if I send out 2,000 and if we get 25% of them come back, I'll be surprised, but yeah. I'm sure my tenants will be really keen on telling me to come check that way. Well, the other thing I'm putting on there is that if, if you want our assistance, call us and we'll set up an appointment. So I'm expecting people then will do that. Yeah. yeah. And I presume you're not going to this lead. It's going to cost them money because that's certainly going to skew their answer. Well, I, I'm well. You know, I think if it's lead, it shouldn't skew it. They should want to know. Yeah. You, you know, but well, they may want to know, but that doesn't mean they want to admit to it. And and honestly, you you can really combat the problem by just running your tap longer. Yeah. That's really yeah. that's that's going to solve really your problem. If you got a lead pipe and you got water lead leaching in, run the tap until now that the service line cleared and now you're bringing in new water. So, all the houses have lead in it to begin with. <laughs> Every side of Troy's top. Yeah. 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 Um, that that was it for director's stuff. Yeah. All right. Other than capital. Uh, well, <laughs> how about the uh, mention about wait till. I, I, okay, yeah, I was going to get to that too, sure. Um, oh, and... uh, all right, so we had an issue last night with a service leak on Nashville. We assumed it was at the tap. Um, so Pembroke, we got Nashville Pembroke out because it was going to be a, um, you know, a yeah. truck job and he would have been able to just do it on the fly. The leak was on the, on, on the main, on the threads on the corp. So he, they couldn't do it live. So we had to do a shutdown. We did the shutdown, replaced the service, no problem. Got everything put back together, no problem. Um, today, this morning, I guess Hoyt's Hill tank must have gotten a little low to start the day. And it looks like there was a communication issue, I think, with between the Chestnut tank and the South Street pumps. Didn't have a pump on overnight. So Hoyt's wasn't getting fed. 
I think that that level came down even more. I think we hit a low suction pressure, which shut off the, the, the um, discharge pumps. So it kind of snowballed into the pumps weren't running and the tank got drawn down. So when we came in this morning about seven or so, we got the, uh, put the pumps on on manual, took a little bit of time, but we got Hoy Till water in the tank. We we're able to get the, the domestic pumps running and, and basically got people water. So a little bit of an issue there, but uh, it was a good learning experience again for me, as well as Santos, Ed's, you know, Ed's gone at this point. He knows that system pretty well. Justin happened to be out today. But we we kind of knew what we needed to do and we, we got it going. So do they they don't have like you know on a lot of building controls we have an automatic alarm that goes to your phone. We get an email saying you know boiler one's not running. You know yeah you, we get they have we, something we like get that? some alarms. Kelly's away, so I don't know if he got it or didn't get it. And there was probably uh, a little bit of communication when getting the alarms you know to somebody overnight where okay. we could have maybe solved it. But um, so they are alarmed. Work. They are alarmed. We have alarms everywhere. For sure. And we have written procedures for how to handle it. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. You, you gotta you gotta go yeah. up there and you gotta you gotta you gotta check out what's going on first, and then you go from there. Okay. Any other questions on the director's report? Hearing none, I'll try your guys' minds. All in favor of approving the director's report? Aye. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Uh, old business. I'm going to make a motion to discuss the PUC capital project. Make a motion we discuss the PUC capital project. All right. Second. Second. All those in favor of discussion? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Real quick, Bergstrom. Um, I think we got some pretty good news. I heard from our um, uh, Connecticut Health Department engineer. I had been putting in to see if we can get additional grant money if we got designated as a distressed community. Um, we could have gotten up to like 3 million in a grant. He informs me we're going to be eligible for like 2.8 million. That's close. So, that's, that's, right. Right. that's pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. That's good. We don't have a loan agreement yet from them. They got to go through their process. So <laughs> I'm kind of waiting until I have something that says that we're getting a 2.8 million grant in writing. Um, but it looks like that's where, where they land. So that, that's good. Um, Progress on the job, again, not a lot going on in the field. We're still bouncing back and forth with uh, submittals and you know requests for info. A bunch of pipe got delivered. Um, the HDPE pipe that's gonna go from, you, you know, from the plant to feed back into the system. So I think he's gonna get going on some pipe work here in the next week or so. Can I ask, how come we're using that pipe rather than steel? I think the cost difference and uh, I think with with COVID and and with the and, and with buckle iron, the cost was like, and delivery times were, what they were. So we went with HD. Is that we're mixing our pipes in the town? Yeah, it's that's just the transmission line from the plant to the to the right. distribution system. We're gonna have um, we spec'd out having a, a, a trace wire with it, and we're gonna have an as built telling us where all the joints are and stuff. So I, how do they join that pipe? Fuse it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And then they'll have, they got to do some uh, internal piping that's going to be under the slab. They got to get that in place before they can start doing some yeah. pathway. So I think once it gets really going on some pipe work, then concrete work can follow. And I think the, the, the project will get moving a little faster in the pool. Right. Um, but the sewer uh, railroad easement, um, he's got two lengths of pipe left to line. We finally got his railroad and insurance all squared away. Um, the, the little bit of an issue now is with all the heavy rains we've been getting, that area is, is really soft. So if we go several days and, and the sun beats on it, it's better, but we, we may need to put a little bit of gravel down there in certain spots so he can get his equipment passed. So now we're just trying to kind of get all that scheduled. Hopefully in the month of August, we can get that, that completed. Um, and the last one, Clark Park 2, uh, last time I reported, we were waiting to get, we had to get a disconnect switch because the transfer switch did not come with a, uh, as a service entrance. So I met with the contractor today. He's got to do a little bit of reworking of his panel board so he can now fit an extra disconnect switch that he wasn't planning on. 
So waiting for him to get his stuff together and get back out there. Okay. Other than that, that's it. Sounds good. Are you gonna give the utility supervisor the report? We're gonna wait till next time. Um, really, probably the main break and uh, and Hoyts would have been something Kelly would have reported yeah. on and the MIUs. So I kind of integrated, you know, his stuff in there. Good job. All right. Can I have a motion? No, I'll we'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So is, is that something we're going to look at in the future using all that kind of pipe? HDPE? 